Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number eight, or video six in the subsection on power series solutions to differential equations. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to use power series to solve a differential equation. I'm going to give you the theory, and in the coming videos, we will do a couple of examples. So there are, there are seven videos previous to this, which I suppose all are relevant in one way or another. In video one, I discussed the classification of differential equations. In video two, I discussed what power series are used for in terms of, let's say, Fourier series or comparing them to Fourier series. In video three, I discussed where power series start. Four, I differentiated power series. Five, I shifted the indices. Six, I multiplied by a function. And in seven, I discussed the characteristic equation which is what we use to solve a differential equation with constant coefficients, or second order differential equation with constant coefficients. So let's say, for example, we have the differential equation written on the top right of your screen. So this equation has the variable coefficient p a function of x multiplied by the second derivative of y plus the variable coefficient q of x multiplied by the first derivative the variable coefficient r of x multiplied by the zeroth derivative and is equal to another variable coefficient t of x. Notice that it's a non-homogeneous equation. So this is the most general is, is, is when it's non-homogeneous. And note by the way we have variable coefficients. This means that we cannot use the method of the characteristic equation but rather we must use the method of power series solutions. So the the suggestion we make is that the function y, a function of x, can be written as the infinite power series. Note, by the way, it's an infinite power series, so you know, for physical reasons at some point we'll have to truncate it. But it's the infinite power series of the, co the coefficients a sub n times x to the n. Now, just to give us an aside, let's say we have the, the differential equation where we have x squared times y double prime plus x times q of x times y prime plus r of x times y is equal to t of x. Now, in this particular case, we it's most likely we would have to use what's called the method of Frobenius. Because if we divide, we'll say across by, in this case, x squared, it's likely that we'll get a singularity or a pole where we get this divide by zero scenario at z, or x is equal to zero. So here I've divided across by x squared. And we note that it's not an analytic at x is equal to zero. So not analytic means uh, basically we're going to be having a divide by zero scenario at x is equal to zero. So this occurs when either q of x divided by x or r of x divided by x squared remain as something over a function of x because when we plug in x is equal to zero we're going to get a, a divide by zero scenario. Now we're going to assume for the moment that that doesn't happen. So when we don't get something that is not analytic, or when we have an analytic function, we can just let our function y, a function of x, be equal to the infinite sum of a sub n, x to the n. The difference is when we use Frobenius, we add another term, we add, an, a, let's say, a small r here. But we don't need to do that for our current uh, requirements. So once again, I've written on the top left of your screen the suggested power series. And we need to calculate the derivatives in order to plug it into our differential equation. So it's very straightforward, differentiating the power series once and then differentiating the power series twice. Note that we can say that the in, in the first derivative we can start at n is equal to 1 and the second derivative we can start at n is equal to 2. And the reason is, is because the lesser terms are 0 anyway. So let's look at the first derivative, y prime. If we plug in n is equal to 0, we find that the first term is 0 anyway. So we may as well just start the power series at n is equal to 1. Similarly, if you plug in n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1, for the second derivative, we find both of these terms are also 0. So for that reason, we start at n is equal to 2. Now, note that all series must start at the same point and have the same exponent. If they don't have the same exponent or don't start at the same point, we require we are required to shift indices. So you are free to select any start point, but personally I always shift upwards. So I find the 
the term with the highest coefficient or the highest power excuse me and uh, I shift everything up to that so if we're looking at our first our zero the first and second derivatives we see that x to the n is the highest power we have x to the n minus 1 and we have x to the n minus 2 so I discussed shifting indices in the previous video and we see that we can shift the first and second derivatives up to x to the n and the actual power series will start now at n is equal to 0 look at my video on shifting indices if that isn't uh, if that isn't straightforward for you note if we hadn't let for example y prime start at n is equal to 1 and y double prime start at n is equal to 2 the shifting of the indices would be more difficult so when we can allow the method of regular power series solutions we always move the indices up as we differentiate however with the method of Frobenius we always start at 0 because the other terms will always be non-zero whereas specifically we could move the index with the differentiation because the other terms were zero but that does not work for the method of Frobenius so next what we do is we plug back in our new first second and zeroth order derivatives into our differential equation so I've done that but I've also factored out the common uh, infinite sum of x to the n so we see that here's the infinite sum of x to the n and we're left with all the coefficients Note, by the way, we have an a sub, n, a sub n plus 2, an a sub n plus 1, and an a sub n here. So, I'm sure you know what's going to happen next. We say that the sum can't be 0, because if the sum is 0, then we get the trivial solution where everything is 0. This implies that the sum of the coefficients must be 0. And what we call, what we call this is the recurrence relation, or it leads to what we call the recurrence relation. Now often in practice, if you actually look at a real power series, or excuse me, a real differential equation, one of your coefficients, p of x or q of x, will be such that they won't require an ind a shifting of indices. So, you know, it, that's, that's just what happens very often. And that's what we're going to look at now. Let's say if we went back a page, we said that q of x was equal to x. What that would have meant is that instead of having to shift this particular term up to a uh, a of n plus 1 we can just leave it at a of n and we need to still multiply it by this term n I'm sure you can accept that so now if we look closely we have a of n plus a sub n plus 2 but we have a sub n and a sub n but just to just before we continue just to confirm we know where this came from if you go back here we have the first derivative respect to x of y but if I multiply let's say by an x here instead of having a power of n minus 1 I'm going to have a power of x to the n and I won't have had to adjust anything else okay so I'm just gonna instead of having to shift to a sub n minus 1 I'm still going to have a sub n here like this so moving on and from now on it's going to be I suppose in many respects fictitious because I'm trying to show you a general example without plugging in any real figures so if we just solve this equation for a sub n plus 2 in terms of a sub n we get what's known as the recurrence relation so the recurrence relation is written on the top right of your screen and we still have it in terms of this other variable coefficient r of x so I'm going to give that a value of positive 1 just now so the recurrence relation gives you your a, a sub n's and once you find out what your a sub n's are you can fill them in on the left hand side of your screen in the black the the black square brackets and then you have your total solution or your final solution so what we do here in order to calculate the a sub n's is we start plugging in n is equal to 0 1 2 or whatever it is and what we're looking for is to see a pattern and instead of writing out all the a sub n's we can just write down a formula for the a sub n's a better one than this recurrence relation so I'm not really going to go through this but you can plug in you can plug in the uh, the values so let's say I plug in n is equal to 0 well I'm going to get a sub 2 and n is equal to 1 I'm going to get a sub 3 generally what will happen is you'll have an a sub 0 and an a sub 1 and as you increment n you can keep rewriting your your next terms in terms of a sub 0 and a sub 1 
for example if we plug in n is equal to 2 here we're going to get a sub 4 and we already have a value for a sub 2 which we can plug back in and get this in terms of a sub 0 something similar happens with a sub 5 we can always write it in terms of a sub 1 what appears to be happening here is we're getting two uh, two equations one which has even numbers this would be even and one which has odd numbers of n and we seem to be getting two sets of series and one has a coefficient of a0 the other has a coefficient of a sub 1 and that's normal to have and generally what you're going to try and do is put it in some sort of very compact and neat form now I'm not going to give you an example of that but I'm going to tell you the sorts of things you should be looking for so like I said you will find that you'll generally get an even and odd solution one for a0 and one for a sub 1 of the two coefficients and they determine everything else and we try and spot a pattern so first of all we look for things like factorials so just very quickly if we go back we can see here that even on a sub 4 we already have a factorial we have 4 3 2 1 on the denominator and this is a sub 4 so it looks like an n factorial on the bottom so factorials are everywhere when we solve these these differential equations note by the way that minus 1 to the n gives us plus or minus 1 so we oscillate between positive and negative but if you look here a sub a sub 2 is, is minus or is negative a sub 4 is positive and it can tell you that a sub 6 is going to be negative as well so this would require a plus or minus excuse me a minus 1 to the n also if we have x let's say to the 2n this only gives us even powers so it's going to give us x squared x to the 4 6 or 8 similarly if we have x to the 2n plus or minus 1 it'll give us odd powers usually we have x to the 2n minus 1 because that will give us 1 3 5 7 and 9 so if you're looking to selectively selectively have certain coefficients you can use either the 2n or the 2n minus 1 coefficient now if you're looking to multiply terms together they seem to be constantly multiplying but they're not themselves say factorials you can use the multiplication or the this multiplication symbol capital pi so it's like the like capital sigma which is summation but this is multiplication now where you lack terms for a factorial multiply above and below by the missing terms let's say for example we had 5 times 4 on the top we so we need of course 3 and 2 so multiply by 3 and 2 and 1 and 3 and 2 and 1 and often what you get is that you get other terms you might have a 4 down here as well and then end up with something like 5 factorial over 4 factorial something along those lines I'm just giving you the sorts of things you should be looking at in order to come up with your uh, your general solution for your a sub n's but once you do that you must plug them back into the actual equation into the, the power series and sub them in for the a sub n and you still multiply by x to the n so the next videos will be examples and I hope that they will um, they will you know fix out or fix any problems or confusion that you may or may not have so thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends subscribe to my channel and you might also give me a comment in the box below thank you